Praise the Lord, church. Good to be in the house this morning. Can we stand? Let's go with, open with prayer. We are here. We know where two or three are gathered. He will be in the midst. So let's invite him in. Father, we are so thankful for the service and opportunity to come into the gates with thanksgiving, to come into these courts with praise. For truly, Lord, you are worthy of our attention, of our focus, of our worship, and our praise this morning. God, let us lay aside any distraction, anything that would hinder us this night. Oh, Lord, be with us this morning. Be with us in this service. Let your presence be have liberty in Jesus' name, and let the church say amen. Lord bless you. you may be seated. Lift up your voice and sing for joy. Clap your hands and make a joyful noise. Blow the trumpet and shout. Praise him for the victory.
he's here, saints. He's here. Amen. Are you ready to believe? Are you ready to receive? Amen. Oh, appreciate the Lord this morning. Amen. As we go to prayer this morning, if, you stand, if you're able to stand, we ask that you stand. Uh, in a song that's been on my heart for quite a while, it was called, Your Cries Have Awoken the Master. And the, the, the chorus of it says, because you prayed all night, because you've held on with all your might, child, your cries have awoken the master. Oh, he knows your voice. Lift your hands, it's time to rejoice. Child, your cries have awakened the master. Amen. He hears our voice. The last verse of that song goes, you're up there worried that he's fast asleep. The winds are so deadly, the water's so deep. But try to be patient, because soon he'll bring peace. Just one word from his voice, and it all must cease. Amen. As we go to prayer this morning, we have a, a couple prayer requests. Continue to remember Rob and Denise. Uh, they, they were not feeling well this morning. It's a blessing to see the Marys in the house this morning. Sister Mary Niece, Sister Mary Blackford back with us. Amen. And continue to remember Sister Nikki, her brother starts chemo this week. So everything went well with his port installation last week. They start chemo this week. Continue to remember him in your prayers. Amen. All and spoken signified by a sign. Oh, Sister, Sister Hatterball. So Sister Kathy Moran fell from a ladder, so remember her. She's in a little bit of pain. Amen. All unspoken, signified by a singing and raising of hands. Amen. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We thank you for the mercy and grace that you bestowed upon us again this day. Lord, we thank you that you hear our voice. Lord, that you know our voice. Lord, you hear these prayer requests as we bring them to the foot of your cross. Heavenly Father, we ask that you move in each and every situation, Lord, that a testimony may come forth. For are you, Lord, have delivered, how you, Lord, have provided a comfort and a peace, a healing in a time of need, Lord. Lord, you hear our cries. You help us through the winds and the storms of our life, Lord. You support us, you, you guide us, you strengthen us. Heavenly Father, we ask all of this in your name. And the congregation says, amen. You may be seated. Lots of announcements. Busy week this week as we head up into Easter. Amen. Monday, we have ladies' prayer here at the church at 630. And also, uh, choir, Easter choir practice is here at 630. So if you're involved in either of those, come out. Be supportive. Tuesday is church fa fast day and corporate prayer day. Uh, again, here at the church at 630, uh, corporate prayer. Wednesday, they have the Hope House at 4.30. If you're any interested in, in helping and support that, see Brother Doug or uh, Sister Vonda for helping there. Also, Wednesday night, we will have in our communion and foot washing here at the, here at the church at 7 p.m. Uh, there will be no kids' power hour that Wednesday as we're having to, as for the communion and foot washing. Amen. And then Thursday, uh, spring cleaning here at the church, getting ready for Easter Sunday, 6 p.m come out, help support. How'd you say that, Amanda? Many hands makes light work. So the, the more we get here, the sooner we can go home. We'll get everything done. Amen. Uh, Sunday morning, Easter service, 10 a.m. There'll be no p.m. service. We have flyers out in the vestibule. Take a flyer, pass it out, invite somebody. Uh, they're asking, the Sunday school is asking that you pre please bring eggs for the egg hunt, colored or hard-boiled, colored, hard-boiled, or plastic, Please make sure you hard boil them if you're bringing the eggs. Uh, also, the Sunday school is in dire need of Sunday school teachers and van drivers. So see, please see uh, Sister Tasha or Sister uh, Tiffany if you're interested in either one of those. As our ushers come forward this, this morning, our offering scripture comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 9. It says, He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of, this, of his bread 
to the poor. Amen. I always like to say you can never outgive God. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless this offering, both the gift and the giver, Lord, that it may go forth to further your kingdom, to spread your word, to invite somebody into your, their heart, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.
facing a giant this morning you might be facing a situation but have you come in the name of the Lord because when you come in the name of the Lord hallelujah he can remove any mountain that stares you in the face hallelujah what a God we serve hallelujah oh mighty God mighty God if you have your Bibles we're going to go to John 12 and then we're going to go to Mark hallelujah 
talking about Palm Sunday today. Brother Tyler's going to preach tonight about Palm Sunday. You're going to get a double portion today. There's four accounts of this. Every gospel records Palm Sunday. But every gospel came from a different perspective. Hallelujah. That's the power of the preaching of the Word of God. Amen. I thought, Pastor, wow, what a... What an awesome word last Sunday night. Amen. Hey, and he was moving around. And his knee was feeling good. And I enjoyed it. He got down here with the people. Yes, sir. Come on. Every time pastor preaches, we ought to be on the edge of our seat. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. John 12, verses 12 and 13. It says, verse 12, on the next day, much people... That were come to the feast when they had heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. Took branches of palm trees. And went forth to meet him. And cried, Hosanna. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's go over to the gospel of Mark chapter 11. I want to read verses 20 and 21. And then we're going to pray. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. This morning I, I want to preach to you this title, From Palm Branches to Cursed Trees. From Palm Branches to Cursed Trees. Let's pray. Jesus, right now, God, we pray, God. For your anointing in this place, God. We pray for your power, God, to come down upon us. God, to move upon your people, God. As we prepare for Easter, God. As we prepare our hearts in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, this week, God. We know, God, that Resurrection Sunday is every Sunday, God. But let us reflect this week, Jesus, God. On what you did for us, God, on the cross. And that you didn't stay on the cross, that you rose again. Hallelujah, and power and glory. Hallelujah, you are the resurrected king. You are the living king. Jesus, help us to have church this morning. To leave here, hallelujah, in the power of your name, Jesus. We give you all the glory and the honor and the power in Jesus' name. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. I, I know this week, which being called the Holy Week, especially if you go into Spanish-speaking countries, there is a heavy Catholic presence. And when you begin to study out these events in the Bible, you'll see that the Catholics have a lot of sermons on this. But I want to in, encourage you this morning. Let's not let the Catholic faith outdo us Pentecostals. Come on, these aren't just Catholic. These are events that took place in the Bible. Hallelujah. And I know every Sunday ought to be Resurrection Sunday. But there ought to be a moment in our year where we take and we reflect upon these events. And we look at these events and what was Jesus Christ saying to his church in these events? <clears throat> the last message I preached it's from the book of Ezekiel. And there was a chariot throne, and the chariot throne left the temple. Ezekiel saw this vision. But at the end of the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel saw this chariot throne coming back to the temple. And Jesus comes down, hallelujah, from the Mount of Olives. And he begins to enter Jerusalem. Come on. Now, when kings already had the victory, when king, hear me out, when kings already had the victory, they came into the city on donkeys. Kings that didn't have the victory would come in on a white horse. But there was no battle to fight. He was saying, I am your declared king. I am here. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He was declaring to his people, that he already had the victory. But his own people received him not. His own people didn't know who he was. Oh, he's coming back on a white horse one day. But at this moment in time, he didn't need to be on a white horse. Woo. Come on. 
Don't go from palm branches in your life to cursed trees. Don't go from palm branches on Sunday that you've worshipped him. And on Monday, you've got a cursed tree in your hand. Come on, I want to encourage you today to overcome sin. I want to encourage you today to live a holy life. I want to encourage you today to say you are victorious in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't have to live in sin. You don't have to let sin overcome you. The same people that cried out, Hosanna, blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Oh, in a few days later, we're crying out, crucify him. Crucify him. Come on, I challenge you this morning. Who are you going to be? Are you going to be one that waves the palm branch in worship? Not just on Sunday, but on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday. Or are you going to be one that waves the palm branch on Sunday and then you come on Monday and you have a cursed tree? Come on, don't crucify him afresh. God is asking us to pursue holiness. God is asking us to live a holy life before him. He's asking us to run after holiness. Come on, we got churches in this hour that want to bring every form of entertainment. They've turned their church into a stage. They've sold out the pulpit and the altar for a stage that the enemy is sitting on that pulpit. Not this church. Not this church. We are an apostolic Pentecostal, Jesus' name, Holy Ghost filled church. Hallelujah. This is an altar where people die to their flesh on. Come on, if, if you're here and you just, you're lackadaisical and you don't think God's doing anything. Giovanni went down in the waters of baptism in Jesus' name last, last Sunday night. If you knew his story. I'm going to let him testify one day. I'm going to let him tell his story. I'm not going to tell it for him. But if you knew what he'd been through, and when he went down in the waters of baptism, come on. That's not palm branches to curse trees. That's waving the palm branch every day. I'm going to give him a sacrifice of worship. Oh, hallelujah, a wave offering, a wave offering every day. Dig a little deeper here. Go into Mark 11. Hallelujah. So in this chapter, in this portion here, I just want to read something here. Verse 1. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem, unto Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples. Let's see what Jesus does. He saith unto him, Go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as you be entered into it, you shall find a colt tied, whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. If any man say unto you, Why do you why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. What's happening here? Jesus says, I could go get that colt. Jesus could go get it. But what has he commissioned us to do? If you're waving palm branches on Sunday, and you got a cursed tree on Monday, you're not going forth. You're not going out to preach the gospel. You're not sitting down with someone at the kitchen table. But when you get a hold of him, and you say, I want to obey my Lord, you will go forth And you will say, the Lord hath need of it. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord hath need of you in his kingdom. Oh, you might think, you might think, does God really need us? Maybe not. But what was his plan? His plan was to use man to preach the gospel. And preaching the gospel is not just here. Are you willing to go to the kitchen table? Are you willing, hallelujah, to sit down with a family that's lost? Are you willing, hallelujah, to go to the hospital? Are you willing to show up at the jail? 
Come on, if you will wave palm branches every day and not allow the enemy to give you a cursed tree, hallelujah, God will use you mightily in this hour just as he used his disciples. See, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, he knew that they would wave palm branches on Palm Sunday. And he knew a short time later they would be yelling to crucify him. But Jesus wasn't worried. Why wasn't Jesus worried? Because Jesus was building a church. Jesus knew that the gates of hell would not prevail against his church. Uh, I believe right now in this hour that Jesus has confidence that we can do it. Uh, Oh, hallelujah, that we can take dominion in this city. Oh, that we can go from whatever we got here today to a multitude in this city. Hallelujah. (laughs) Jesus, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I'm I'm learning this city. (laughs) God's allowing me to learn the streets in this city. (laughs) All the activity that goes on in this city. Come on, you can't win a city that you don't know. When Jesus looked out upon Jerusalem, he began to weep. In Luke it says he began to weep. Why? Because Jesus knew the city. The city was to be for peace. But because they waved palm branches and then they were going to hold cursed trees, he knew that they missed the peace that they were looking for. That they were looking for a military peace. They were looking for a political peace. And the disciples still don't get it. We'll go to Acts chapter 1 here in a little bit. They still don't get it. In Acts chapter 1, oh hallelujah, after all these events take place, you go to Acts chapter 1, and they still ask Jesus if he's going to restore the kingdom. And they weren't talking about the kingdom of heaven. They were talking about the kingdom of Israel on earth. But Jesus didn't come to give them political peace. He didn't come to give them military peace. He came to give them peace. Hallelujah. Oh, heavenly peace. A peace that would surpass all understanding. Hallelujah. Let's go down. Continue in Mark. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem, chapter 11, verse 11, and into the temple. And when he had looked round about all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. <laughs> come on. He's not sending you out by yourself. He is with us. He is with us here. As we go out into the highways and the byways to compel them to come in, he is with us. We have power over every spirit in this city. Hallelujah. If you don't believe you have power over every spirit, then you need to say, Jesus, refill me with the Holy Ghost. Because when he gives you his spirit, you have power over these spirits. And it says, verse 12, and on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came. If happily, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. What does Jesus say here in verse 14? He says this, And Jesus answered and said unto them, And said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard. See, this fig tree was cursed because it had no fruit. Come on, you got to get to a place in your life where the fruit of the Lord begins to be on display in your life. I'm not talking about being famous. I'm not talking about an Instagram following. What I'm talking is you get down to business with God. Say, I don't care what anybody thinks because I love Jesus and I want the power of Jesus in my life. I want him resting on me. Hallelujah. Because I need fruit in my life. Because when you go out to the highways and the byways to compel them to come in, if there's no fruit in your life, if there's no anointing on your life, Pastor, you just preached it Sunday night. If there's no oil, there's no anointing, they are not going to come in. But if you go with the oil of the Lord, if you've been waving palm trees all week and saying, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be my King. Hallelujah. If you been doing all that all week they're going to come hallelujah to the house of God they're going to get baptized in Jesus name they're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost 
Now, the Gospel of Mark is very interesting here. Before we talk about further this fig tree being cursed, it's interrupted right here in Luke by something that Jesus does. Let's look at verse 15. And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast them out that sold and bought in the temple. And overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Come on. What's he say here? Hallelujah. Verse 17. And he taught them, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves? He challenges them. Oh, this, th- these offerings, th- these took place at the temple. It wasn't just that that was going on. It was the motive of their heart that they had lost, hallelujah, the desire for God in the temple. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Come on, you can sit on a pew and lose the desire for God right in the church house. Come on, if you're only a Sunday worshiper, if you only wave palm branches on Sunday and you go right back to crucifying him afresh on Monday, oh, hallelujah, then you can lose the desire for God, oh, in the house of God. Come on, I'm praying somebody gets filled with the Holy Ghost today. Somebody gets baptized with the fire of God in this house today. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the fire of God in this, oh, in this hour. Verse 18, and the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him. Come on, you don't have to worry. When you go out here and you preach, they fear Jesus. They might attack Jesus. They might attack the church. Oh, but guess what? They fear the church. They fear his name. That's why they bring every accusation. That's why they cry crucify him. That's why they say kick him out of schools. Kick him out of Congress. Because they fear him and they fear his name. But if we will be a people that will wave palm branches every day. Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Greater is he that is within us than he that is against us. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 18. I just read that because, listen to this. All the people was astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out of the city. I was just having a conversation with a family last night. I said, man, some of these Trinitarian Spanish speakers, man, they can come with intimidation. They They want to get in your face. But guess what? I don't fear them. Because we have a doctrine that is so powerful. We have a doctrine that Jesus Christ handed to Peter and says we have the keys to the kingdom of heaven and of earth. Hallelujah. We have the keys. Hallelujah. We are a people called by his name. And when the Jews, hallelujah, cried out, Hosanna in the highest with palm branches. And then they said crucify him. Jesus knew, said, I got a Gentile people. I got a Gentile people. They're going to be apostolic in power. Hallelujah. They're going to have the keys. And I'm giving them my kingdom. Come on, we can preach this doctrine here on the earth. Uh, We can see the kingdom of God come near uh, to people's lives in Bible study. We can see Jesus transform them. Come on, but we can't be intimidated in this hour. People that are intimidated go from palm branches to curse trees. Come on, I'm not saying we need to get in anybody's face. That's not how you do it. You just love people. You love people with the word of God. But don't you ever think, hallelujah, that we don't have the truth. We got the power of God with us. We have the truth of his word with us. Hallelujah. We, hallelujah, are a people of his name. 
Oh, the Jews couldn't handle his name. So he said, I'm going to raise up a Gentile people and I'm going to reveal my name to them. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall save his people from their sins. Woo. But hear me out. If you're going to win this world, if you're going to compel them to come in, hallelujah, you can't go from palm branches to cursed trees. You cannot just live for him on Sunday. Who are you trying to impress, people or God? People that live for him only on Sunday? Oh, we put our suit on, we look the parts, but who are we trying to impress? People or God, when you get up in the morning in devotion, say, I need your power today. I need a relationship with you today. You are impressing God, not people. It's what you do in secret. It's what you do, hallelujah, in your prayer closet. The Pharisees, they would fast and say, hey, I'm fasting. They would pray in the streets, hey, I'm praying. Look at me, look at me. But Jesus turned it on its head and said, get in your prayer closet with me. Get alone with me. Get a relationship with me. And I will pour out my spirit on you. And you won't go from palm branches to cursed trees. You'll have a palm branch waving in worship every day. He is the holy king. Oh, he is the mighty God in Christ. He is the Lord of lords. He is the king of kings. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the author and finisher of my faith. Galatians 3, 13 and 14, it says that cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. There was a moment when Jesus, on the cross, in his flesh, in his humanity, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken? I believe Jesus, the, the man of God, the flesh of God, was always connected to the Spirit of God. There was never a moment in his life where he was disconnected from that. That's why he never sinned. When we get disconnected from the Spirit of God, we, we, we end up in sin. You, you can't get disconnected from the Spirit of God. Oh, hear me out. You can't get disconnected from the church because who's, who's got the spirit? <laughs> Come on. We talk about the rapture. When, this, when we're raptured out of here, this building don't have the spirit anymore. It's us. We're the church. You can't get disconnected from the church. And you can't get disconnected from him. Because when you do, you'll end up in sin. Whew. But I believe that was a moment and Jesus and his humanity, that the weight of the world came down on him. And he felt this distance in his humanity. The weight of the world, all of our sins upon him. And it all came down on him, the weight. Why, God, have you forsaken me? Whew. Many people believe that God has forsaken them. But it's because they waved palm branches on Sunday. And they had cursed trees on Monday. It's the hour that we pursue holiness. It's the hour that we pursue Him in all of our holiness. Because in all of His holiness, He puts His holiness on us. Hallelujah. Because there is a dying and lost world that needs people that are on fire for him. That needs people with palm branches in their hand every day that worship him and say, Hosanna in the highest. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If the musicians can come, I want to go over to Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. I'm sorry, First Peter. If you have your Bibles, go to First Peter 1 and... We're going to look to close. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Peter 1, verse 13 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober, 
and hope to the end for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the form of lust and your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Come on, some people, maybe you're not in the party anymore. Maybe you're not drinking alcohol. Maybe you're not drug addicted anymore. But how is your conversation? How do you use Facebook? How do you talk to the employees at work? When your boss comes after you, can you still submit? Whew. <laughs> because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Verse 17, if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do you believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory? That your faith and hope might be in God. There was a moment, Jesus, every miracle, every miracle, Jesus would tell him, don't tell anyone. Keep this quiet. But he raises Lazarus from the dead. And he begins to enter Jerusalem. And it was no longer that he was going to keep it a secret. He's saying, I am your king. And I'm riding on a donkey because I already have the victory. And I'm bringing you a peace that will set you free. I'm not here as a military king. I'm here as a suffering servant. To save you from your sins. Come on church, let's begin to pray. His power is in this place. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. God, for your blood. God, prepare our hearts, God. I know every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, Lord. But this year, right now, God, as we enter the month of April, God. God, as we prepare for Easter next Sunday, Lord. God, let us over this week. God, see you. Oh, in the power of your resurrection. Hallelujah, the power of your anointing. Your blood that ran down Calvary's hill, God, set us free. And you're not on that cross anymore, God. You rose again to give us victory. You rose again, hallelujah, that we could overcome sin, death, hell, and the grave, that there is nothing, God. Oh, hallelujah, that can hold us down because you have freed us by your blood. Come on. Are there anybody, are any prayer warriors in here? Begin to pray. Hallelujah, it's power. Is in this place. He is moving all over this place. Every heart. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. You may have been waving palm branches every Sunday. Maybe you're in a place in your life you're waving palm branches on Sunday, but you're so entertained on Monday. You're so full of entertainment, the stage in your life, and you need his power. You need his presence. I am here to tell you that he can overcome in your life and you can have a living breathing relationship with him every day he can be the God that sits on the throne of your hearts and you can say Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest every day and you don't have to pick up that cursed tree oh hallelujah he's not on the he's not on the cross anymore he took that sin for you oh the weight of the sin of the world came down on him because he he did it for you he came for you oh he's here for you he's not here to beat you up he's 
here to give you mercy. He's here to give you grace. He's here to help you overcome. Hallelujah. Let's all stand, church. Come on. If you're a saint of God, if you're a saint of God, let's pave the way. If you're a saint of God, I challenge you to wave the palm branch here in the altar so that somebody else can get free this morning, so that somebody else can get free. God, oh, that you'll lay your hands on them and they'll receive the Holy Ghost. They'll repent of their sins at this altar. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Oh, hallelujah. This altar is open. This altar is open. Come and cry out to him this morning. Come and cry out to him.
right now. Take somebody's hand where it's appropriate. Raise that hand to heaven. I want you to pray for that person next to you right now. Pray for them. Pray for them. Touch my sister. Speak something into them right now, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, Brother Bobby's preached a good message this morning. Let's put that into action. Let's put that into action. Put it into action. to that, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, mighty God. We yield ourselves to you today. We yield ourselves to you today. Come on. this morning church come on I know it's a Sunday morning but we need a little help come on just clap your hands and praise and magnify him entertain his presence here today God's wanting to do something in somebody's life come on hallelujah 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 Raise our hands one more time. Just thank the Lord for his goodness, his mercy, his loving kindness. Lord God, we praise you today. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have today. Lord, to enter into your presence. You never fail us, Lord God. You are the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And Lord God, we yield ourselves to you today and thank you for what you have done here in this service today. But we also are living in, anticip in, in, in anticipation of what you're going to do this evening, man, this week and the weeks to come. 